Ah, uh, Zombie You, or otherwise known as Zombie. Do you guys remember this game? <laughs> zombie or Zombie You has 5% of people who platinum the game, and that's all due to this achievement, Unstoppable, which is just beat the game on survival mode. It can't be that hard, right? <laughs> Pretty much when you die, you have to restart the whole game all over again. So, with that being said, let's jump into the world of zombie. Uh, hold up, that was the, that was the world. Oh, shit. Uh, cue the right one. First, we need to start off with some of the trophies that you get passively from playing the game and progressing through the game. Like, make it to the safe house, Buckingham Palace, these are just complete missions to get there. And there's some easy ones like headshots. Now, there are some collectathon ones that we're going to be talking about later on in the video. Now, we first start off with a running segment where you get chased by zombies, and then we awake in some stranger's bed. Wakey, wakey. <laughs> you don't look so good. Oh, shit! After getting utterly roasted, we get our first trophy, which is Safe House. Now, after activating the generator and getting informed about everything, especially things we need to get, we collect this Bob bag after killing a zombie, which gives us our second achievement. Good going. A nasty business, but it's gotta be done. As I recall, there's a pistol and ammo you're definitely gonna need. We get informed by our next missions, which is scan CCTV junctions, which gives him more access to cameras, the prepper, the guy that was helping us out. And then we get our second achievement, headshot, which was really easy to get. And on our way to the supermarket, we ended up finding a form of a shortcut, which is a sewer grate. This is usually how the people of London travel. I'm surprised Ubisoft knew how to accurately portray the people of London and their day-to-day -day lives. Jokes aside, we try to get to the supermarket, and then this happened. After getting to the supermarket, we ended up getting a trophy called Let's Go Shopping, which is just get to the supermarket. Very easy stuff. I'm very surprised this game has so many amazing set pieces, especially like this little butcher shop area thing in the back of the supermarket, which I don't know if this is like accurate or not, but I've never seen a butcher shop in the back of a supermarket before. Anyway, we get this hammer, which actually ends up using, being a useful tool because we give it a bunch of planks, and then we finally get the CCTV junction box that we needed. Now, after we do that, I get jump scared by the zombie who was not on the stairs beforehand, and we encounter our first ever special infected. What does this zombie do? He either A, shoots lightning at you, has a fun time with you, aka has sex with you, or summons other zombies. He summons other zombies. Why? I don't know. Oh, hell no, boy. At first I was scared of him, I even paused the game, and then I realized he's just a bootlegged Cole McGrath. <laughs> After a boss battle, I realized that I could have completely avoided by just running past him. We ended up heading back to the safe house where the prepper tells us that, hey, look, there's a horde of zombies coming and you have to defend this place. This segment is probably um, one of the, another one of the drawn out segments because some of the zombies will actually end up taking forever to spawn if you kill them too quickly. We end up using a Molotov to clear out the horde and, and we ended up getting another achievement and it's Burninator. Burninator is pretty much kill a zombie with a Molotov. Very easy stuff. After we clear out the horde, we need to get our mission from the prepper, which we do, but before we do that, we need to talk about these trophies. For instance, kill a certain amount of zombies, the expand backpack ones, which you just gotta find at backpack locations, which we'll find as the video goes on, and CCTV is watching you. This is just hack all the CCTV junction boxes, which will go passively in the game. Then there's Unbreakable, which is just reach a survivor score 2000. You get that from killing zombies. Alright, we finally make our way to the next mission, which is we have to go to the Palace of London or something like that, and then we end up killing some zombies along the way, and then we find another sewer great like i said the british people really love using this as a form of traveling and i end up getting jumped in this segment by multiple zombies and we ended up finding another cctv junction box and we actually end up finding a new gun which we use on one zombie which we got one of our passive trophies which is kill 50 zombies outbreak then after that we ended up getting unbreakable which is survivor score 2000 then we encountered a special infected that zombie's got armor i want armor I know YouTube's weird about cursing, but fuck this zombie. He takes way too many hits to kill on survivor mode. After finally beating the zombie, we ended up sleeping in a random bed that we just found lying around, and we got the lockpick which we need to progress 
further and then we entered this weird segment for some reason a random horde of zombies just comes after you even though you got a lock pick I, we didn't even make any loud noise after defeating the zombies we progressed further into the map where we found another junction box and we ended up getting the trophy Buckingham Palace we made it to Buckingham Palace after reaching Buckingham Palace, we encounter the guy, aka the scientist, who looks like he's from Among Us, and then we clear out the wave because he wants us to find some pages that will lead to the panacea, which is kind of like a vaccine type deal to cure the infection. So we're on our way to collect a letter called D's Letters. Not even kidding, I didn't make that up, but we'll talk more about it later. Anyway, we kill a bunch of zombies during the segment, we earn the Epidemic Trophy, which is kill 100 zombies. Let's go! As we make our way through Buckingham Palace, we get a couple close calls here, and you'll see me, like, panic because I'll- I'll- immediately whip out my gun right away and then kill the zombies that way and I don't care about wasting ammo when I'm low on health we find another little junction box we have a lot more of these to go for the story and we get these letter we now have to return these letter to the panacea man or whatever his name is I have no idea we end up finding a crossbow along the way and we encountered the weirdest cutscene ever oh hello yeah, I have no idea what he ejects himself with. I guess some makeshift vaccine. I have no idea. But we get a first crossbow kill, which earned us a trophy for getting one crossbow kill. Only time we ever used the crossbow. And then we end up injecting a zombie with a syringe to get some sort of, like, weird virus thing out of him. And it'll prevent us from being grabbed. We get our next task, and we go to my second favorite part of the game. Now where are you going? Are you scavenging for supplies or what? So our second task is to find another D's letter. I think it's the second letter that we have to find. Anyway, we clear through the zombies in this weird warehouse area, which is, I don't like this per, uh, part of it. Honestly, they just flood zombies in this section, and quite frankly, it just visually looks disgusting. We find a double barrel shotgun, and I'm like, yes, a shotgun, I love shotguns. And then we open up another shortcut. Man, why do I sound like a news anchor right there? Anyway, we go up this elevator, we clear out some zombies, and then we get to my favorite part of this level. Funny enough, you could run past the zombies in this one because the music is distracting them, so they're not aggroed. And I don't blame them, the music is straight heat. Anyway, we find another CCTV, and then we find a combination to D's letter, and then we get D's letter. A bunch of zombies just randomly aggro on you, we take care of them, then we find the best melee weapon in the game. We also have to escape, so we escape through this event. OH SHIT! Ah! We make it back to Panacea Man, and he's not going to send us on a collectathon to get more of these letters. Actually, we got to go find them ourselves, but we need to get a bunch of stuff and progress through the main story. And so we end up actually having to go and get supplies, which a prepper tells us, hey, go get supplies, you dumbass, I know this guy. And then so we go there. We end up getting an ID card, but for some reason the game kept bugging out right here. So I got really frustrated and smashed his head in. Then we got his key card finally. I got jumped by a bunch of zombies and almost died during this segment, and I actually, <laughs> actually scared the hell out of me. After escaping Death's hands once again, we find another junction box, and then we find this chick who's going to rescue us. So now we gotta go to the Tower of London. As we make our way to the Tower of London, we end up fighting a bunch of zombies, but we get a new gun, which I got very excited for because it was a sniper rifle, but the sniper rifle absolutely sucks. You can't use its long range scope, and then on top of that, on top of that, it has this little cockback reload animation or whatever the hell it is, and it just prevents you from actually being able to fight zombies and hordes, so it's useless. We get an achievement after, uh, which is make it to the Tower of London, our pass with trophies, let's go, and the game actually starts setting up some interesting set pieces. After I get scared, I get scared again with this zombie baiting us. I was like, okay, I'm ready. And then there's another zombie. I mean, look at me. I just completely panic right here. We find another junction box, and then I end up almost having a near run ending experience. I can't explain to you how much dread I felt thinking I died right there because I was just so stupid. Anyway, we end up finding an AK in this vault and we ended up doing this weird code bull crap, which actually is going to let us get more D's letters later on. Then we finally almost reached the extraction point. We ended up killing a bunch of zombies while I earned a trophy for killing 200 zombies during the segment. So far, we only had two near run ending experiences and we're doing pretty good so far. I think we're like halfway through the game, so well, let's push forward. 
to which we did actually push forward because we ended up gunning down majority of the zombies. I was not playing around. I could have sworn, because I, I haven't played this game ever, so I thought this was the end of the game, so I wasted as much ammo as I could. Despite me using everything in my utility, I actually almost died several times during the segment because we had to secure the landing site. And due to the shove animation. Oh my god! For some reason, this zombie was in the middle of nowhere and we had to kill him. But, now we got a cutscene. What the fuck is this piece of shit? After experiencing the gift only the, a god could give you in terms of a cutscene, we had to head back to the prepper, mainly because he wanted to just tell us he told us so, and then eventually he gave us another task, which is the generator ran out of fuel, and I ended up taking a quick power nap during that segment, so it just looks hilarious for this little cutscene to happen, and it just power goes completely out. Then I took way too long on my way to the next objective to get gas, admiring billboards. I, I just like the billboards in this game. I don't know why, I'm just obsessed with it. Then we get our first map, which is a day map, and it's like, oh my god, let's go. We had to go through a minefield, which how we went through this minefield is we actually baited the zombies by just shooting. Then we heard the most generic scream after that. We cleared our way to the next objective, and then we encountered another survivor. Who are you? Where's my son? This guy looks like he's straight from Ben Vizen, actually gives us a task, and I'm gonna let the prepper explain what we have to do. Is he serious? Fuel for antibiotics? Oh Christ, he's sending you to die. On our way to find antibiotics, we got another junction box, which goes to the passive trophy, and then we go to my favorite place, the nursery, which we get an achievement for. I love all the little horror elements that are in this one little area. Anyway, we get the, a key card, which we need later, and then we actually have to cross these rickety boards that obviously are gonna break. When we get the antibiotics, guess what they do? <laughs> then we encounter another special effect or another special zombie. This one is so easy. Just hide in a corner where the doors are, shut the doors, and she'll automatically go to the doors and bang them down, and then you just unload on her. Very easy, and quite frankly, not scary. Oh, there you are. After defeating a special mini boss, we unlocked this little closet door thing that had a special code on it, which we solved, and it gave us a UMP5 and some C4, which is dope. So we cleared out the rest of the daycare or nursery or whatever the hell it is, and then I said nope to most of the zombies. I barricaded most of it, and then cleared the rest out and ran away like a little bitch. And I repeated this during a segment where uh, the prepper had to hack something and there was just a wave of zombies coming rushing at us. So I just ran around the map and just Call of Duty trained them until I got the door open and I dipped. Can anyone hear me? Please help us. There are three of us here in St. George's Church on Brick Lane. Please. Oh, that sounds like a trap if ever I heard one. By the way, that's gonna be our next task for the future. Anyway, we had to get the uh, survivor pad upgrade from this guy, so that way we can hack this door to get the gas. Then finally, we headed back to the main area and filled up the generator. Alright, so we pretty much have to head to the place where the girl was calling for help. Obviously, this is a trap, so I didn't bring too many supplies with me. We end up clearing most of the zombies along the way, and we go through this weird little, like, dark area and I, I, I have no idea there's just this whole area is just weird and it could fuzzle or whatever it's just a mess also fuck this area the reason I'm saying that is you're about to find out cuz something tragic happens real tragic <laughs> I gotta redo that all over again so we did actually do it all over again but I actually got the extended backpacks this time because I completely missed them last time after another three hours of my life I made it back to the same exact spot I actually saved a little bit of time and I used flares this time to bait out the spitting zombie so that way he wouldn't clap my cheeks I very happy I did this because I actually got through into the next part 
During this segment coming up, we get forced into a cutscene where we get kidnapped into this weird little game area. For some reason, our character changes clothes, meaning our character changes as a person. And no matter what you do, you always have these weird clothes on. So if you're wondering what that is, it's due to that. We get limited supplies here where we have to actually use explosives and a pistol to actually go forth. And then we kill us the zombies. <laughs> After 5 or 10 minutes of that, we ended up getting all of our gear back, and then on top of that, we ended up getting even another assault rifle. Yes, we got another one. Let's go. I ended up almost ending the run again with a Molotov. Oh my god, I'm so lucky that it did do that much damage to me, and we headed back to the safe house. I got an achievement. Also, I saved right away. Not that it would have done anything. Now we have to backtrack all through the entire map and get all of these letters. We got like two along the way before, and now we had to go back and get it all again. We had to go and give the letters to Panacea Person, go back to the base, get yelled at a little bit, and then go back to Panacea Person to clear it, everything out, go through Buckingham Palace again, do a couple boss battles, and to go against his eye, and this is where our mission actually starts, pretty much where we do the boss battles and everything like that. We had to kill Panacea Man, sadly, just so that way we could get his eye, so that way we could get the Panacea Cure, because he was able to actually make one, or not cure, but like the vaccine or whatever. This is where we get the last CCTV Junction Box trophy after this puzzle that took me way too long, and we got the CCTV Junction Box trophy. We finally headed on our way to grab the panacea, where there was a couple cool little water effects that the, the segment did, where pretty much the little sprinklers obscured your vision, and then there were certain like, areas where you carried your bag. That was repeated before, but there was also a boss I thought we had to fight, but no, we just get the panacea, fight a couple little enemies here, and then grab the panacea. Um, I don't know why, but you can just leave it, Like, but you already fight the enemy, so you might as well just, just grab it and go. You know, there's no reason not to. We get the hell out of Buckingham Palace, finally, we never have to come back here ever again. And then there was a horde of zombies to my right as I was leaving, and I completely crapped myself. After we reached the surface, we learned that there's a fire bombing going on, and that we need to go back, collect our gear, because we're about to get evac'd. And this is where we actually end up beating the game, after I take a fat nap. I then got yelled at by the prepper. Get the hell out of my safe house! Yes, finally. We get a little cutscene after we get to a certain part. We get the achievement. We got Unstoppable. We beat the game on Survivor Mode. Let's go, boys. Let's go. Which is awesome. And that ends the game. Psych. We actually evac. The game uh, rolls the credits too early just to mess with us. We actually evacuate and we get a cool little cutscene. It's not really that great. But... Where's my ultimate platinum trophy at? Where's that at? Well, you have to beat this game two separate times on two different modes. What the fuck? We're gonna do a massive jump cut. I actually did it. I went through and I beat this game twice. If I wasn't for this video, I wouldn't have beaten the game twice back to back. I even did the end credit cutscene for some reason. I don't know why here. But funny enough, our last uh, game we did on Chicken Moon and we got the platinum trophy. Finally, finally we got it. I stood up all night playing this game. So I hope you guys liked the video. Subscribe if you do. Till next time. Bye. We lost Dr. Combo. We gotta go, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you saved my life so many times.